Steve Garvey, the batter, here in the bottom of the ninth. And here is the pitch. A long drive to deep left field. It's out of here. Home. When Steve Garvey joined the Dodgers in 1970, Los Angeles fans soon found out number six was a winner. Garvey not only became one of baseball's most feared hitters, he also became a gold glove first baseman. And that's not all. Steve Garvey proved to be one of the nicest, most courteous men in sports, a man whose clean image gave baseball a better name. Two men on with two out. The pitch. This ball's hit deep down the left field line. Home run, Steve Garvey. At the La Costa Hotel in Spine, California, greatest sports legends host Jane Kennedy talks with Steve about his early days. My dad was driving for, for Greyhound at the time uh, when I was about the age of seven. And one day he said to me, he said, would you like to, to bat boy for the Brooklyn Dodgers tomorrow? And I said, you're kidding. I said, but it's, it's Friday, I've got to go to school. And he said, well, I think tomorrow will be a good social education for you. And I said, oh, great. And I started on that Friday. That was the first time I was a bat boy. And that was the year uh, of the spring training after their first world championship, where they oh. beat the Yankees in 1955. And these were the world champions. And these were the fellows that I read about. And then throughout that whole first day, I was next to them, and I touched them, shaking hands or getting the bats or the gloves or uh, the balls. Um, all those things happened that first day, and it was like a, an explosion of a, a new experience and world for me. In 1968, you signed a contract with the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Was that a dream come true? Well, it was, because at that time, the draft was something that was uh, very important to all of us that wanted a professional career but you only had one twenty-sixth of a chance of being drafted by the team that you really wanted to. So I knew the draft was coming, and the draft happened one day, and I really didn't hear from anybody. And the next morning I woke up, and I started to read the paper, and my mother was at the kitchen table, and she said, guess who drafted me? I said, who? She said, Los Angeles Dodgers. I said, you're kidding. I can't believe it. And she said, yeah. She said, well, you'll probably hear from him you know, pretty soon. I, said, I looked at it, and there it was, Steve Garvey. Uh, I was the number six pick in the first first phase of the draft. And I was very, very excited and just couldn't wait to talk to him. After two successful years in the Dodgers' farm system, Steve Garvey reaches the major leagues in 1970. A contact hitter with decent power, Garvey plays only part-time his first two years. Originally drafted as a third baseman, Steve has switched to first base in 1973. Opposing teams soon discover Garvey is a superb fielder. In 1974, Steve leads the Dodgers in both hits and runs batted in. Even though his name is not included on the All-Star ballot, fans across the country vote for him anyway. Amazing. Garvey receives enough write-in votes to be the National League starting first baseman. Unfortunately, Steve becomes ill just before the All-Star game. But five days before the game, I came down with a case of the mumps, and we, we couldn't figure out what it was. They thought it was wisdom teeth or a virus, and then the doctor finally, two days before the All-Star game, said, well, you've got a case of the mumps. We're going to give you antibiotics. Uh, and it's up to you as to whether you want to go to the game. And I said, well, I've got to go. A million people wrote in my name. Uh, I'm the starting first baseman. Sure, I've been in bed for four days, but I've got to try it. Steve Garvey, the batter here, with runners on first and third. Tian looks in. And the pitch. A line drive. Fair ball hit down the left field line. One run scores. Win goes to third. Garvey goes into second base with his second big hit of the game. The National League wins the game 7-2, and Steve Garvey, mumps and all, is named the game's most valuable player. For the rest of the season, Steve remains consistent. Overall, he bats 312 with 200 hits and 111 RBIs. He also leads the Young Dodgers into the World Series against the Oakland Athletics. a low-scoring affair as both teams exchange defensive gems.
in the end, the Oakland A's win the series four games to one, despite Steve Garvey's series leading eight hits. For Steve Garvey, the season was not all that bad, as he was later named the National League's most valuable player. Winning an MVP award, really, you feel so very, very satisfied to have accomplished being the best player that year in the whole league. And for no fluke. In the following two seasons, Steve again batted over 300 with 200 hits and close to 100 RBIs. He also won the Golden Glove Award both years. The only criticism he heard was that he didn't hit enough home runs. Well, in 1977, Steve proved that he had the power. Steve Garvey, the batter here, facing Nolan Ryan. And here's the pitch. Oh, he crushed it. That ball is way, way out of here. Home run, Steve Garvey. There's a high drive to deep left center field. The ball is out of here. What a smash. A long drive to deep left field. It's gone. Home run for Steve Garvey. I almost sort of said, the year before, you didn't hit too many home runs, and we didn't win, so we feel we... We should go to the power aspect of uh, the game now. So I decided to take the bat back a little farther and go for more home runs and went from, gosh, under 20 to 33 and a record for first baseman and right-handed hitters in Los Angeles. So it worked out well. You mentioned Tommy Lasorda. He replaced Walter Alston in 77. What uh, was the difference he made on the ball club that year? Well, basically, uh, it was his approach. He was more of a psychologist than Walt Alston was. Uh, Walt Alston was your quintessential... Uh, manager who sat there, uh, was very observant, uh, managed just about by the book. Uh, when he spoke, everybody listened because when he said something, he was saying something that would really help you. Where Tom was sort of more gregarious, he's more of a psychologist. Uh, he would try to find out what motivated uh, you. So two different men, uh, one more extroverted, one a little less extroverted, uh, but similar results. Along with Steve Garvey, the 1977 Dodgers have some players who can really hit the long ball. There's Reggie Smith, Dusty Baker, Steve Yeager, and Ron Say. Powerful Dodgers win the pennant and go on to the World Series where they face the New York Yankees. The Yankees win game one, but in the second game, Steve Garvey and the Dodgers show their strength. The Dodgers win game two, and Steve Garvey continues to excel, hitting at a 400 clip. Despite the performance of Garvey, the Yankees eventually lead the series three games to two, thus putting the Dodgers' backs to the wall. In game six, it's the Yankees' Reggie Jackson who burns the Dodgers. The pitch. The Yankees win the series thanks to Reggie Jackson's memorable performance. But fans should also remember the display put on by Steve Garvey, whose nine hits and 375 batting average was tops among the Dodgers starters, a tribute to his consistency. I don't know how you would describe yourself, but a lot of people I would think in describing Steve Garvey would say there's only two key words, consistency and durability. 
Well, I've always had those, even as a child. For some reason, I, I had always appreciated uh, someone who went out every day and played day in and day out. I believe in being ambitious. I believe in setting my goals and, and attaining them. And I try to set them almost out of reach. Like 200 hits has always been a goal for me because I know it takes playing just about every day, getting up four times, making uh, constant contact with the bat, uh, hustling every, every play. And then when you reach the 200 hits, which isn't done very often, once you do that, you've reached a goal that uh, has been very, very satisfying. In 1978, Steve Garvey continues to give 100% as he shines both at the plate and in the field. A model of durability, Garvey hasn't missed a game in over three years. In 78, Steve starts in his fourth straight All-Star game. A lot of times people say, oh, you get a good salary or you've accomplished a lot. But I always want to reach my potential, and that's the key. I'm always striving to reach that, and I don't think I have. In the eighth inning, Garvey's game-winning triple earns him another All-Star MVP award. That season, Steve reaches his goal of 200 hits and becomes the first Dodger ever to have four 200-hit seasons. Garvey's play leads the Dodgers to another pennant and a trip to the World Series. The 1978 World Series featuring the Los Angeles Dodgers against the New York Yankees. After Los Angeles takes a two games to none lead, nothing goes right for the Dodger Blues. New York soon ties up the series. Los Angeles seems snake bitten against these Yankees. In one of baseball's more bitter rivalries, the Yankees go on to win the series in six games. For Steve Garvey, the season is especially bitter since earlier that year, he was involved in a fight with a teammate who took exception to his good guy image. I think what happens many, many times with people that try to do a lot of positive things, there are always going to be skeptics. Well, if you're going to be cynics or critical, uh, just watch for a while. Watch me over a period of time, and if you think I'm acting or if I'm inconsistent, uh, then come up and tell me that I'm a hypocrite. But if I don't, I think then that you know that I am sincere, and that's my personality, and that's my beliefs. Mm -hmm. Why is it, Steve, that so many people resent someone who's a good guy? <laughs> well, Jane, a lot of times the, the minority has a, a larger voice than the majority, and these are the people that are always critical, or always cynical. Uh, I was the type of person who always tried to please everyone and I found that you just can't do that I, I try to uh, have friends uh, as many friends as possible and try to be as nice a person as I can to everyone um, I think just being reciprocal to each other with uh, how are you today or how are you feeling or whatever it may be is the basis that we can build from but there are going to be people you just can't please with controversy now surrounding him durable Steve Garvey continues to play like Steve Garvey in 1979 and 80, he collects over 200 hits, bats over 300, and drives in over 100 runs each season. All-American Steve Garvey, one of the game's most consistent players, has yet to miss a game in six years. In 1981, controversy again surrounds Steve. And the press reveals that he and his wife are separated. Everybody thought that Steve Garvey had a perfect life, uh, whatever it may be, a career, marriage, uh, friends, acquaintances. And then when a problem did arise of that magnitude, the press jumped on it. And there's what they call the feet of clay syndrome, where you're built up and you're put on a pedestal, and then you are chipped away at. But the public was, was very, very interesting uh, at that stage of, of my life because it was as if they had a different perception of Steve as somebody that was truly them, that did have a problem from time to time, but continued to go out and perform, and to continue, uh, they continued to go out and shake hands and sign on the and make appearances and try to do everything he could uh, for the world he believed in. With these problems, did you feel that it affected the relationship with your teammates? I don't think so. I think the guys uh, rallied around me on the tough times, too, and I'll always thank them for that. I think uh, at that point, there really became a much better understanding of, of who Steve Garvey was, and that 
Gee, Garf had problems, but he's still doing the same things he said he's always done, and he really is. So that's when the understanding really became uh, 360 degrees. In 1981, Steve Garvey leads his teammates to another pennant by playing inspired baseball. In the World Series, the Dodgers again face the dreaded Yankees, and typically, New York finds a way to win. Down two games to none, the Dodgers head back to Los Angeles, where suddenly their fate changes. The Dodgers win the next three games to take a three game to two lead. Thanks in large part to Steve Garvey, whose 400 batting average is tops for both teams. In game six, the Dodgers are one out away from finally winning that elusive championship. Ken Landro there. He's got it. The Dodgers have done it. The Dodgers are the world champions. And then Next season, he joined San Diego, where he is signed as a free agent. Still durable and consistent, Garvey is on the verge of setting the National League record for consecutive games played at 1,118. On April 15, 1983, Garvey makes his first visit to Los Angeles in a Padre uniform. Naturally, it is an emotional return. Regardless of the change, we all have changed in our lives. What remains is what's in our hearts. There aren't too many words that can describe the feeling I have for you. But there are three. And I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Coincidentally, the following night, Garvey can set the consecutive game record in the same ballpark where he played for 13 years. And the pitch. A looper in the shallow right field. Falls in for a base hit. How about that, folks? Just like old times. The next day, Steve takes out a full-page ad in the Los Angeles Times. It is a message to his loyal fans. It was a chance for me to thank them, really. And people said, oh, it was a lovely ad. I said, well, Let's just think of it as a message, really. It, it costs some money, but... Uh, some money? <laughs> $15,000 to thank people? Oh, gosh, uh, that doesn't even scratch the surface, as far as I'm concerned, as to what I owe the, the public. Uh, I owe them a lifetime of dedication, and that's just one of the ways I could put it down in black and white so they could have something to keep with them for all time, I guess, for those people that cared uh, how I felt. Well, I have to thank you for coming down here to La Costa to be part of our show, Greatest Sports Legends. Um, this is where we tribute the legends, and you have truly added to the list. Well, thanks. I've enjoyed it and enjoyed our conversation. Thank you.